Thank you for joining us. This video will describe how to create a map with GeoDiscover from US Geo Market. What you're looking at is a standard ClickView dashboard. The steps that we'll go through to create the map using GeoDiscover for ClickView are identical to the steps you would use in ClickSense. All right, let's look, let's look around the dashboard. We have various list boxes which we'll be using. Uh, we've named them and we put their names here in some buttons. MP, API underscore ID is one we'll use. That's our location IDs. We'll be using this table to send colors to the, to the layer that we add to the map, map well chart. And we'll be using this list box, LB1000, to tell it which column of information to send to the points on the map. We've already added the extension object to the map. Now let's simply right click, go to our properties box, and begin to configure the new layer. Now let's walk through these options here. The map configuration file. This is aimed primarily at legacy GeoDiscover users who have used a configuration file to build a map. And they can put the name here and it will populate the properties box. This would not apply uh, to anyone going forward. Security, username and token pass. You have a choice, and all this is described in the user's manual, the installation guide. I can put my username and token pass here for this dashboard, or I can leave it in a common file back in my uh, installation folder, and it applies to all of my dashboards. That's what I've chosen to do, so you don't see my username and token pass. This map has no layers yet, so let's hit the plus sign and add a layer. There are four areas you have to configure. Some of them are optional, but you configure the basic information of the layer, the pop-up information if you want to have a pop-up, labels across your, your points or your polygons, and the renderer, the colors that go into the point or polygon. Uh, only info is required. The rest are optional, but we will fill them in here. All right, so let's create a layer. First, we have to name it. This is a locations layer, so we'll call it locations. Now, the URL, I will cut and paste that. That is a URL from Esri, which brings in all the information about our layer. This could be coming from ArcGIS Online. This could be coming from ArcGIS Server on-premise or it could be coming from the Esri portal. Every layer has its own unique URL. Now the draw mode has two options, snapshot and on-demand. Normally, for average size layers, you would use snapshot. That brings in all of the information. On-demand brings in the information you see in the extents of your map at the moment, but if you zoom or you pan, you drag your map around, it brings in more information. I use on-demand when I'm using large data sets, 50, 75, 100,000 points. For this example, we're going to use Snapshot. Now the key to the GeoDiscover module is its ability to synchronize the Esri information in the map with the click information in the dashboard. The way it does that is linking a field for each layer. So the Esri join field area here is asking for the field ID in Esri. I know that that's API. Now it links to a click field in the data model. Now click view uses list boxes. So it's asking for the click join list ID. That is this list box of location IDs, map API underscore ID. Now we have connected the Esri world to the click world. Through the associative engine, by picking this location and click, by associating that location ID to the data model, I now know everything else in the dashboard. I tell it that yes, both of these items are strings. Now I have two more choices. Selectable. Selectable simply means that the layer that I'm creating will be listed in the drop-down of all layers, it will be selectable. I also have a choice for visible. 
That means that the layer will automatically launch when I open up my dashboard. I want to do both of those things. That's the bare minimum to have an interactive mapping system and click in Esri. Well, let's go ahead and configure the pop-up. When I touch one of these points, I will get a pop-up. I name it. We'll call it Location Info. Now, the data for that pop-up will come from two sources. One will be a table inside of Click. It does not have to be on this same tab. So I'm going to tell it that the table where I want to get information is Map Well Chart. Now you could use the standard naming conventions that are automatically generated in ClickView. I simply gave it a more descriptive name. Now once again, how do I match the data in this table to Esri? I have location IDs in the table, and I know that those correspond to API in Esri. Labels. This is new functionality in this, the latest version of GeoDiscover. By enabling labels, we are now going to present a label on top of each of our points. We zoom in and out of the map in order to see them. If there's a clustering of points, it would be, it would be cluttered. So as we zoom in and out, different labels will appear. I have to tell it what field from Esri I wish to display. I will display their identification number API. The rest of this is defaults. Uh, the font, you can pick the font you wish to see, the size, the style, the variant, the weight, the color. I'm just going to go with the defaults for the label. Now finally, the renderer. A renderer provides the coloring information for the point, line, or polygon layer. So I do want to color my points, and I do want to have a heat map. We'll talk about heat map in a moment. For our color values, we need to tell it what type of layer we have, point, line, or polygon. This one is a point. Do I want to see circles, squares, or diamonds? Your choice. The point size. You can tell it a fixed size for the point, or you can tell it something like 5, 10, 15, 20. This gives you your point the ability to grow and shrink based on data in the table. We are taking the min-max in the column of data, breaking it, in this case, into four uh, uh, segments, and that will tell me the size of the dot. For this example, I'm going to keep it on a fixed size. Once again, the rendering information, the coloring, is coming from a table. Normally, it's the same table you've used in other uh, tabs here, but it can be different. In this case, it's the same one we used before, map, well, chart. Now, you can have multiple columns in this table. As you see here, I have a column with uh, colorings of uh, yellow and red, and I have a column with greens and blues. I could have 10 columns if I wished, and I can send those. My end users can choose what they want to see on the map as far as colors. They do that by using this list box, LB1000. I can look at the depth column or the volume column, or perhaps I have a revenue column or a number of patients column or a number of product ship column. You can have as many as you want. So I have to tell it this list box name, the ID, LB1000. And once again, I have to tell it the matching field between the click table and Esri. So once again, in this case, it's API. All right, that described our points and the colors we want to send to the points. Let's talk about heat maps. I've chosen to allow this layer to have a heat map generated. Heat maps only apply to point layers. You cannot have a heat map over zip codes or states or counties, only over point data. Now. We have improved the heat map generation. A normal heat map is simply the proximity of the points to one another, and uh, it's been colored by concentration. 
But what we've done is we've allowed you to decide which column you wish to base the heat map. So we're, we can tell it to use column depth, and the, the heat map concentration visualization will be based on the depth, not on how close together they are. You could tell it to use the volume column, and the heat map would be based on the volume values. Perhaps you have a column of revenue, so your heat map would be based on the revenue column. This allows you much more flexibility in your heat maps. It makes it more intuitive for your end users. So we've answered questions about the basic layer, about the pop-up, about the labels, and about the renderer. Let's, let's add that layer to our map. That's all there is to it. We can change our map options. These are overall. This would be, do I want my base map, my default base map, to be topographical? streets, light gray, satellite imagery. We set that here. I'll keep topographical. Now because we have a home button checked, that's the icon right here next to our green, white, and gray, I tell it the latitude and longitude of the center of my map. That way if I, if I get, if I move around my map a lot and I want to just go back to the center, I hit the home button and it centers. I can also have a locate button. A locate button uses the physical location of my computer and centers the map on my computer. I'm not going to choose that at the moment. So we have configured a layer and our defaults for our map. So it's an extension object. We have to go out of web view and back in. So what's happening is the extension object is talking to Esri, and it's talking to Click, and it's saying, oh, here are all of our points. The push pins you see, that's the native symbology from Esri. That's how the layer was created, and that's how it would visualize if you didn't have our renderer. So, and you also see the labels here on the points, 42-081. That's the label for this location. Now. I want to make my coloring based on the red and yellow column, the depth. So I choose depth, and the map changes, and I now have red and yellow points. Maybe my end user wants to see it based on volume. So I click volume. We're now yellow, I'm sorry, we're now green and blue dots. So that's how you configure a map. Now, you see a clustering right here are points with no labels. As I zoom in and I get more space, I get the labels for each of those points. Very valuable attribute. So what we've seen in this short video is how to add a layer to a map. Here's an important point. You can repeat these steps and have as many layers as you wish. We only have the one layer. Locations. You could have locations, you could have zip codes, you could have counties, you could have sales territories, you could have uh, manufacturing plants and stores and end users. There's no limit to what you can add. All right, you know we created a heat map. So we now can get a heat map based on the depth column of our table. So what you've seen here in this, in this video how to create a layer, repeat the steps as many times as you wish for multiple layers. Everything I've described is also in the installation guide, which came with your extension object. And I hope this has helped you understand that making a map is not complex. We've done this in, in under about four minutes. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to helping you in the future with more advanced features of GeoDiscover from US Geo Market. Thank you.